So this is part three of our International Women's Day special series. And as I mentioned to you, I am talking to one of the women who inspires me so much. Her name is Sylvia Mulinge. And it, on this video, which is part three of the series, it, uh, I want us to look at purpose. And, you know, she's so big on living with the end in mind. You've said that many times. I've heard you say that before, you know, living with the end in mind. How do you get to that place where you have such clarity? You know, I, I admire how you know exactly who you are. You've accepted your weaknesses, your strengths, and everything about you just the way that you are, and you're clear about where you want to go. How do you get to that place? I think your purpose unfolds in your process, right? Um, I don't think I woke up one day and said that this was going to be my life's purpose, but through the process of my life's journey, it um, it's kind of gets clearer with every passing day. So for me, what I choose to do is to apply myself and the values that I have, my faith-based uh, uh, values, to just create um, an impact in every place that I go um, and in every place where I'm, I'm given an opportunity to be able to serve and just to impact the lives of those people that I find uh, myself connected to or who are, who are, who are connected to me, right? Uh, so whether it's at home or in the workplace, in community, um, Am I giving the very best of myself? Um, because I believe everyone is blessed to be a blessing. And uh, it's, it, it's so much more when you life pours out of you than trying to hold it all to yourself. It gives so much more meaning and, and, and context to life. So for me, I'm always looking to ask myself, um, am I, is, is there an impact because Sylvia was here? Um, whether it's in the kitchen, the few days I appear in the kitchen. <laughs> Because Sylvia K was there an impact, right? Uh, but I mean, more importantly, and um, is around every space I find myself, am I giving the very best of me? And is it impacting people and growing people and lifting up people? I personally believe in a shared prosperity model. It doesn't help the world if you have a few people who are doing very well and everybody else is struggling. Okay. It's about how do we continuously lift each other up. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly asking myself for all the various platforms that I find myself in, how am I leveraging what I have, whether it's within me or the resources that I have access to, to be able to lift those around me. Um, and I believe that is what will, will create a better world for all. Absolutely, and we rise by lifting others. By so, lifting others, that's true. So that's very true. Um, but then how do you remain, even with that clarity, how, do you, how have you remained comfortable in your skin? You know, not, I think we've sort of covered it, but I, I, I want to just hear, you know, you've made a decision, this is what you're saying no to, this is your big yes, um, and you're following this path. So as I said, I live for the audience of one. So I check with my one, right? And once I'm clear that this is the direction that I've gotten from my one, I go. Now, in the going, there will be many challenges. There are many people who will mock you, there are people who will make fun right. of you, there are guys who will try to pull you down. Um, but if you have that conviction that you're on the right path, you keep going. I mean, let me tell you, the reality is there are very few people who will wake up to celebrate your seeming success. This is true. And one of the things I like to say also is, which I repeat frequently, is that many see the glory, not many people know the story. They see all the outside uh, glitterings, but not many people actually know uh, the things that you have to go through as an individual to either keep moving, sustain it. Because remember also, even as a leader, everybody gets their energy from you. I mean, we are, people are looking up to you, they're drawing their emotional energy from you. And it's almost like as if people expect you to be perfect, they always expect you to be on top of everything, which is exhausting and tiring. Mm -hmm. And you honestly cannot be that. If, if you're that, then you're not authentic. Mm -hmm. If you're that, you're, you cannot be vulnerable with people because you cannot show them your weaknesses. Um, and I think that's not a real life. And if you project that and you tell the young girls or ladies or people who are looking up to you that this is the way to be, then you're misleading them because people have to learn how to embrace even their own failures. You have to understand that your greatest lessons come from your failures. Your greatest lessons come from your mistakes and be comfortable in that. Um, and just choose that whatever I have learned today, I will not uh, repeat the same or have to learn the same lesson tomorrow. Uh, somebody once said that the saint is a sinner who fell down mm -hmm. but got up, mm -hmm. right? So I think living with that mentality kind of energizes you. 
uh, but then also living with a lot of clarity of whose expectation do you want to meet, mm -hmm. right? So for me, having that clarity of thought also kind of helps me to be able to figure out where do I put my energies in and then who do I listen to. Um, at the end of the day, your life is uh, some of the perceptions, the perspectives and the thoughts that are accumulated in your mind. And those are formed by what you allow yourself to, so to watch, to the conversations you allow yourself to partake in, um, the spaces you find, you know, I sometimes um, it's you may be seen as a snob, um, but there's no need of me going to allocate time to go and listen to a conversation that is neither going here nor there. And that doesn't mean that all, every conversation must be, I don't know, talking profound. about <laughs> profound and all that. It, sh it should just be meaningful, yeah. right? Whether we it's, we are discussing dresses as girls, maybe we are establishing a meaningful connection. Whether we are discussing the state of politics in Kenya, it's a meaningful conversation. It's something that you walk away, you walk away from that conversation and you feel that I learned something that I did not have, I did not have before. So just being careful and intentional to watch over that um, kind of helps to provide that clarity. Uh, many times it is misunderstood, but I've gotten comfortable with being misunderstood and it's okay. Do you have any regrets? Um, do I have any regrets? I think maybe if I had learned to be more purposeful when I was younger, it probably would have saved me from a lot of hurts um, and uh, probably saved me from, from maybe, I don't know, being a lot more, how do I say it? Being a lot more deliberate with my life. If, but I guess also that, that was my process. Maybe I needed to go through that to be able then to appreciate uh, the value of have living up from a purpose-driven perspective. Mm. So I guess everything at the, at the ultimate end of it adds up to who I am. So I don't really have any regrets, but if I had any, is that I wish I had discovered this much earlier. Mm. But I'm grateful for it all. You're, f you're fairly young to have been able oh, to... Oh, I'm fairly much. young. Thank you for <laughs> telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I mean, very young, actually, for what you've been able to achieve um, until now. Okay. We shall stop it there. Oh, I need to think about my next question carefully because I don't have Sylvia for the whole day. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for being here. And let me think about what's coming next. But part four is coming, so subscribe. This is Rena Hicks. God bless. Bye. Mm -hmm.